know this country is called the land of the happy bird. That wonderful feeling that you get when you're close to heaven. Right? You get that feeling of being in a special place, a kind of spiritual space. Because the hummingbirds exude an energy, they give off an energy that is really overpowering. And so I enjoy the hummingbirds. And and that developed, helped me to develop this strong interest and to find out everything I can find out about the hummingbirds and then to share it with others. I'm Theo Ferguson. And together with my wife, we run this little operation here that we call the Eret, the home of the hummingbirds. The first people of this land were the Amerindians. And to an Amerindian, the hummingbird is a very sacred creature. They saw the hummingbirds as the souls of their dead ancestors or the spirits of their dead ancestors. Let's start with a simple one. The basic biology of this little bird. They burn more energy per unit of mass than any other living creature. And they have the fastest body metabolism in the world, and that's exceptional. So they live at a biological extreme. They're very unique, one of a kind in the world. And that makes them special, and that hunger that they have for any, for sugar, which they take, and they take in voluminous amount of that. So the nectar from the flowers is a 25% sugar solution and it's pretty sterile. But we also we supplement that nectar from the flowers with nectar that we have in our feeders. So what we have here is nectar food. We make it. We make it to resemble what they get from the flowers. So it is also 25% sugar solution and we sterilize all the mixtures. We use only white sugar to make it. And the other thing is the dexterity in the air. The things they can do while flying, because they are uniquely adapted to to be acrobats in the air. They have a, they beat their wings very differently. They've been able to figure of it, and have very unique neck muscles that gives them great um, flexibility in the air and dexterity. So they are the only birds in the world that can fly backwards. Only one, ones that can hover on their own energy. Only ones that can fly upside down, only ones that can fly sideways, only ones that can shoot straight up into the air like a rocket, and they're the fastest flying birds in the world in relation to size. That says a lot about the hummingbirds. So they dazzle human beings. People just can just sit there and just take in the, take in the acrobatics of the hummingbirds. Because they're truly acrobatic creatures. You guys come from Canada. You see hummingbirds in Canada? Because mm -hmm. yes. every province of Canada got hummingbirds too. Yes. Yeah, Alaska got hummingbirds too in the summer. You got them throughout every mainland state of the United States got hummingbirds. Mm -hmm. um, we got them throughout Central America, throughout South America, throughout the Caribbean. Vast numbers of hummingbirds. Yeah, they're naturally iridescent. They glow. And that comes from a physical effect, the refraction of light deep within the feathers and the refraction can depending on the angle of light different con colors can be reflected and it's a very very um highly iridescent and they have the ability to turn those that iridescence on and to turn it off by changing the angle of the feathers so they control that or change the angle of the bodies so they can literally come at you like a ball of fire sometimes the fire is red sometimes it's green sometimes it's blue they really shine and in so doing, they intimidate each other. And, um, and, quite, uh, and, and perhaps can damage each other in the process. And the reason for that is that they live in a world in which they need so much energy, so much food, that they have to fight among themselves all day, continuously. So they've developed tremendous fighting ability. So they're always in combat. That takes a lot of energy. It requires a whole new approach to processing that energy. And they do it very well and very efficiently. Most of it is shadow boxing, where they will dance for each other and try to intimidate each other. And the iridescence plays a major role in that shadow boxing. But every now and then they get very vicious and they can get physical. And then the bills become spears and they can literally uh, go at each other and stab each other with the bills. Yeah, it can get very serious. It's a yin and yang situation. They're very aggressive 
creatures, but at the same time they're very soothing and calming, very therapeutic. In fact, um, a lot of people see this garden that we're sitting in here as a therapeutic garden, as a healing garden because of the hummingbirds. But, or you think of it another way. You've been to the ocean front, the beach front. You've seen the waves. They break in and it could be quite rough and turbulent out there. But if you close your eyes and listen to it, it's very soothing, very calm. Another yin and yang situation. It is now clear to me that a lot of people come into this garden feeling energy. They sense an energy, an energy that is very calm and very relaxing. An energy that puts them in a nice good mood. An energy that takes away the angst, takes away the stress. And even them feeling so good about themselves that they don't, they're, they're, a lot of people don't want to leave. <laughs> and they tell me a hummingbird is a hummingbird is a hummingbird. End the story. <laughs> All right? Now most people don't see beyond this. They see a little bird flying around and it's a hummingbird. We now have 18 species in Trinidad and Tobago. Urban areas don't see as much hummingbirds as the parents or the grandparents. So, so that's the biggest threat to hummingbird right now, habitat loss. So although the population is pretty healthy, I would say, um, we should not take it for granted. Already we are not seeing that many hummingbirds in the urbanized areas because in the urbanized areas we've replaced our flower gardens in this modern world with green lawns, green hedges, concrete tiles, asphalt, and, con and more concrete. That's not good for the hummingbirds because there's no food for them in the urbanized, urbanized areas. And we can bring back the hum hummingbirds to the urban areas if we were to bring back the flower gardens. And when you, you leave here an ambassador to, to help to sell a message to the world about the importance of hummingbirds in nature, so that they deal with the positive side. Not just to bring joy to people, but they are very important pollinators in humans. And we have to help people understand that they don't exist just for us to admire. You know. They play a critical role in pollination in nature. And so we need them. So we always ask our, our guests here to leave as ambassadors and to spread that message about the importance of having in nature. I